Hello and welcome to Fernbank Science Center's The Sky This Week for the end of January 2021. The moon is full this week. Some of the spring stars are becoming visible in the evening sky. Not too many planets visible this week, but lots of bright constellations. Start off on the 24th at 7 p.m. and looking toward the east. That's the direction where the sun appears to rise from your observing place. The moon is getting toward full on the 24th, but it's right in the middle of the brightest stars we can see all year long. Sirius, the dog star, Rigel, one of the stars in Orion, Aldebaran that we looked at last week in the eye of the bull, the twins, Castor and Pollux, Procyon, a whole ring of bright stars. And early in the week, the moon is right in the horns of Taurus the bull. If you watch over the next few days, you'll see the moon getting fatter every evening. That bright ring of stars, sometimes called the winter hexagon, Sirius the dog star, Rigel, one of the knees of Orion, there are his shoulders, here are his knees, belt, hunting knife on one side. Aldebaran, the eye of Taurus the bull, his little sideways V-shaped face. Capella, the goat star. The twins, Castor and Pollux. Procyon, and back to Sirius. This covers a huge, like half the Eastern sky and all the stars are spread pretty far apart. When the moon is as bright as it is during the beginning of this week, it might be hard to see some of those stars, but even in light polluted backyards like mine, you can pick out most of those. Keep an eye out for those bright winter stars in the early evening toward the East. See if you can pick out where the constellations are for each one of them. Auriga, the charioteer there, up to the left of the moon. Capella, that bright star is almost at the top of the sky. The Gemini twins, a little sideways this early in the evening, Castor and Pollux. The small dog, Procyon with a bright star, Canis Minor, not much to that constellation. Canis Major might be a little bit easier to see. This picture shows if you have an imagination, sort of a big hunting dog following Orion across the sky as he's heading toward Taurus, the bull. The moon is full on Thursday, January 28th. It happens at 2.16 p.m., but we won't see it until the moon rises later that evening. And the full moon of January has lots of names. The Abyssinui people of Western New York referred to it as the center moon. The center, about the middle of the coldest part of the year, the middle of winter, roughly that moon in January marks the middle of that cold time. The cold moon, the freezing moon, the frozen exploding moon, lots of names for the cold part of the year. And the wolf moon might be the one most uh, recognizable to people. People used to think that wolves howled because they were hungry. We know nowadays they howl for lots of reasons, but during this cold time of the year, the air is nice and crisp and clear and the wolf howls carry easily on the air. By the end of the week, take a look toward the north part of the sky. The north part of the sky has a few fairly decent groups of stars to find um, navigation. The North Star. It's not the brightest star in the sky, not even close, but it's useful because it stays or appears to stay in the same spot all year round. Every, every night, same time of the night, it'll be visible at the same time in the same place all the time. North Pole of Earth points pretty close to that star out there in space, so it appears to stand still all night long. Other stars and constellations appear to move around it. The North Star is at the tail end of the Little Dipper, part of Ursa Minor, the Little Bear, a very small group on the sky. Most people can find the Big Dipper. There's the bowl part. Here's the long handle. And at this time of year, 
By 10 o'clock at night, the dipper is standing on its handle over there toward the northeast part of the sky. The two pointer stars point toward Polaris, the North Star. At that same time, take a look over toward the east, a little bit to the right of north, and the moon by the end of the week will be past full, but it'll still be pretty bright. And it's toward the const it appears in the constellation of Leo the Lion. Leo is one of the springtime constellations for us in the Northern Hemisphere. Once you start seeing this one in the sky, you know the, con the season of spring is not far off. And that was really important, particularly the further north you are. Seeing those comforting stars of the spring, it's not too much longer. We have to wait for warmer weather. Look at it a little more closely. The sickle, the curve of stars that makes the head of Leo the lion. Regulus, this bright star is supposed to be his heart. There's a triangle of stars back here for his tail. And the moon appears in Leo toward the end of the week. Next night, the moon will be, have moved along its orbit and be in a little bit different place, but keep an eye out for that during this week. If you remember that Big Dipper, part of the Big Bear, Ursa Major, that's a little bit to the left of where the moon and Leo are in the early evening sky. That's it for this week, some constellations and a full moon. Be sure to visit the Fernbank Science Center website, www.fernbank.edu. Thanks very much for listening and keep in touch.